YouTube, how you doing? Murph here bringing you another product review. Today's review is going to be on a brand new gaming mouse by Deepcool. This is the Deepcool MG510. And a lot of you might already be pretty familiar with Deepcool. They are known mostly for their cooling options for desktops and laptops and things like that. And they are now releasing some new gaming peripherals, starting with this gaming mouse right here, the MG510, and then also their new gaming keyboard, this right here, which is the Deepcool KG722. I'm doing a full review on this as well. Both of these videos should go up roughly the same time on my channel, so if you're interested in seeing that, that should be live on my channel by now as well. But as far as this gaming mouse goes, this is a wireless gaming mouse, and we're gonna get into all the specifications and talk just a little bit about the software and things like that. But as usual, we're gonna start off by talking about the design and the build quality. Now, as far as the build quality is concerned, I really have nothing but good things to say about this mouse. The plastic they have used here feels very strong and durable. The fit and finish seems to be very good as well. There's not a lot of gaps or anything that sticks out to me that this isn't a well-made gaming mouse. The skates that are used on the bottom feel very good. Now, as far as the design is concerned, very simple, clean aesthetic here. All black, but it does have like this almost teal blue on the bottom that you can't really see all that much when it's flat on the desk, but you can see just that hint of blue on the bottom. That's a nice touch. And you also see there is RGB on this mouse as well, the RGB LEDs. There's a diffuser along the back. And there's also an area here with the deep cool symbol where the RGB LEDs can bleed through there as well. Overall, a strong gamer aesthetic, but it looks very good. And it's a good size, kind of a mid-size gaming mouse, which is going to be good for most grip style users out there. Of course, depending on your hand size, it'll be a little bit more or less comfortable for you. But most people with an average size hand should be able to play just fine using a claw or fingertip grip, or if you're more of a palm grip user, this will be great for you as well. Overall, just a really good gamer aesthetic, good size. I really like the overall design of this mouse. Now, in terms of specifications for this mouse, it's about 124 millimeters long, 65 millimeters wide, and just over 39 millimeters high. It has a weight of 85 grams, of course, that's without the cable attached. And this mouse is using a Pixart PAW3370 optical sensor, which is quite a good one. It's got a max DPI of 19,000, a pulling rate of up to 1,000 hertz, 400 IPS tracking speed, as little as one millimeter liftoff distance, and acceleration up to 50 G. Also, this mouse is using Omron switches that are rated for over 20 million clicks, and they sound and feel very good, very clicky and tactile for the mouse one and two buttons. The side buttons are very tactile as well, which is great. A lot of times on a gaming mouse, those are the two worst buttons. Those side buttons can typically feel a little mushy, and that is not the case here at all. The scroll wheel feels very good. It's smooth, but you can still feel the individual steps in between. Pushing in on that scroll wheel, again, very tactile. And the sixth mouse button, which by default is going to control the RGB functions on the mouse, is quite tactile as well. Overall, these buttons and switches feel great. Also, this mouse is wireless and it has great battery life up to 36 hours on a single charge. Of course, that's without lighting. With the lights continuously on, that's probably gonna be somewhere closer to about 30 hours or so. But you're looking at approximately 35 hours of battery life, but you can use this in wired mode as well. It's got a detachable USB-C cable, and it's got kind of these cutouts on the inside. I don't know how well that camera's gonna pick that up, but that corresponds with the charging cable. So it's gonna be a very tight fit. You're not gonna have any issues with the cable coming unplugged while you're in the middle of a game session or anything like that. Now, as far as software is concerned, once you download it, this is what you're gonna be presented with. And it's really easy and intuitive to use. On the left-hand side here, you have the battery indicator. Down below that, you have the different RGB lighting functions and you can even just turn the RGB lighting off if you prefer. And then up here is the polling rate. If it's not already set to 1000 by default, let me see what the default is actually. Yeah, default is 250 for some reason. Just go ahead and put that on 1000. That's gonna be where you want it at, especially if you're using this primarily for gaming. Up here at the top, this is where you will put your DPI settings in. 
you can see by default it's at 1500 let's say i wanted to lower this to say like 1200 i can do that here and then there's also a dpi setting button on the bottom here as well so you can cycle through those dpi settings using the mouse once you have it set up in the software here and then this little cog wheel here is where you can adjust your mouse sensitivity scrolling speed and your double click speed and then if you want to change your macros you can do that through here so as far as the software is concerned it's really easy to use and it does have all the features that typically you're looking for in software for a gaming mouse things like changing rgb functions dpi settings macros things like that we're pretty much at the end of the review so what do i think about this mouse and would i recommend it i think that i would this mouse is priced at 80 dollars and i mentioned this for their keyboard review as well the gaming peripheral space is super saturated right now and i think companies especially ones that are coming out with new products understand that if you really want to have a chance at competing you really have to come out swinging not only with the price point but in the features that you're offering as well and i think that deep cool has done that here i think that if your price range is somewhere around 80 dollars 60 80 maybe even up to a hundred dollars this should definitely be on your list of gaming mouses to check out of course this is competing with Things like the Glorious Model O, which has very similar specifications, also has RGB, also has a very good software option. It's a little bit of a lighter mouse, which depending on what you're looking for and the types of games that you play, that's more of a personal preference thing. Some people like a lighter mouse, some don't. So ultimately that might be something that drives you to one versus the other. So a lot of options here at this price point but I think this is definitely a good one. Looking at the stat sheet and the specifications, it's got everything you could want out of a gaming mouse at this price point. All of the buttons on this thing are super tactile and feel really good. And it's a good looking mouse too, aesthetically. I like the RGB accents that are on here. I like the fact that it's kind of two-toned on the bottom here really just kind of sets it apart. So if you're looking for something in this price range and you're looking for a little bit of a lighter gaming mouse and something that has good aesthetics, something that's gonna look good on your desk and is going to perform well no matter the game that you're playing, and certainly if you want wireless functionality, this is definitely a mouse that you should check out on their website and see if you'd be interested in it because you are getting a lot for the price here. With that being said, that wraps up the review. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it useful. If you did, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you want to see other content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be notified of when I post new content. And YouTube, we'll catch you later.